one of my favorites. Benvenuti at the Vatican Museum. We have not much visitors today. How can I be helping you? I am here to serve you. I'm looking for some information on the burning of the Borgo. Can you help me? The uh, burning of the Borgo? Uh, sorry, but I don't understand the English very well. Ah, uh, wait! You are talking of uh, the Incendio del Borgo, of Raffaello. We have it in here, in the Vatican Museum. Great! Can I please have a look at it? I am very sorry, but they are cleaning inside of the museum. Only official staff can enter. I understand they are cleaning the museum, but if so, where is everyone? They are gonna take a break. I'm knowing them it will take them a long time, eh? Eh? It's quite difficult to understand your English, but can I go inside the ancient Vatican library? No, 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 no. It is not possible. Only the Pope can make you enter. I know that, but surely a strong Italian man like you can help me get in. Sorry, it is not the me who decides who gets in the old library. Well, I'm sure you can let me have at least a quick look inside the museum. Oh, mamma mia! I get into trouble if I let you enter the museum! Please, it's really important that I enter the museum. Okay, but only because you uh, look like a uh, good person. And you have very wonderful eyes. But be quick. Really? Thanks. You're my savior. Yes, please be careful inside. This fresco shows the story of Constantine's vision just before the battle against Maxentius. The legend says that he was told he would have won the battle if he'd only changed his bearings from the Roman eagle to the Christian cross. This symbolically meant a move from paganism to Christianity. Constantine, the first Roman emperor, had to accept the Christian faith. I'm really curious to know what would have happened to our world today if the ancient Romans hadn't accepted Christian faith. This fresco statue reminds me of the ancient Greek Caryatids. This fresco statue reminds me of the ancient Greek Caryatids. Men shown on these frescoes are emperors and sovereigns who once were very famous protectors of the church. Raphael's famous fresco that represents the burning of Rome in 847 AD. They say that Pope Leo IV extinguished the flames by just blessing them with his hands. It's interesting that in this fresco, three of the most important Greek capitals can be seen. Doric, 
Ionic, and Corinthian. This little scene is taken from the burning of Troy in Virgil's Aeneid. The man is Aeneas with his old father Anchises on his shoulders, and little Ascanius is just close to them. It's incredible how many classic and pagan images there are hidden in Christian art. Pope Leo IV. Start your voyage remembering the burning of the Borgo in Rome. Burn the hand of God and follow his sign. The hand of God should be the Pope. The Pope is pointing at the ceiling, but I don't see anything particular on the ceiling. Wait a sec. These clues were written by the Templars, and it's well known that in the past, many popes wanted to destroy the Templar order. So maybe, symbolically, the hand of God could mean the opposite of where the hand is pointing. This means I should look precisely near that locked wooden door over there. There's a strange hole inside this decorated wall. It's a hole. Burn. It's exactly what I've done. A magnetic cylinder. If it was so difficult to find, it must be quite important. A little magnetic cylinder. Do the words follow this sign to the last bricks of the Palace of Rosicrucian? Here, an arrow will guide you. Mean something to you? Uh, let me think. Maybe it's about the Villa Palombar. The Rosicrucians went there in the past to talk about alchemy and other things. And you know where I can find this villa? Destroy! Now there is a piazza where the villa was before. Destroy? Yes, but don't worry. The most important piece of the villa is still there. They call it the alchemical door, or magical door. Before destroying the villa Palombara, they brought in the magical door in a little park in the Piazza Vittorio Emanuela II. Great. I'll go there straight away then. Thank you so much. Wait, wait. I tell you the legend of the magical door if you want. The story tells that Palombara has built it Many centuries ago, when a strange man visited him one night, the door is full of strange symbols, alchemy, magic, and, and such things. Nobody knows how to read them. But some people say that the strange man was the devil, and that the door is the entrance to hell. Others say that if you translate the magic symbols, you possibly find out the secret of the philosopher's stone. I don't know if these stories are true, but I know. I surely know that I am always afraid walking near the door at night. Please be careful, Bella me.
What I like most about Rome is that when walking around, you never know what ancient monument you'll find. Even the air has an ancient aroma, at least when the cars and buses aren't polluting it. They represent the ancient Egyptian god Bess. During medieval times, people considered him to be a kind of good luck dwarf. These statues are quite disturbing. So this is the famous magic door. They say it hides the secret of the philosopher's stone. An arrow will guide you. Okay then, let's have a look at this more carefully. This one-eyed pyramid somehow reminds me of the symbol printed on the $1 notes. Fascinating. This arrow is indicating some far off place. The center of this circle has worn stone borders as if someone had managed to move or push it a long time ago. Hey, now it's moving. It must be some kind of ancient magnetic mechanism invented by a very creative alchemist. A little magnetic cone, similar to the cylinder I found before. Now I can truly say that this has become a real treasure hunt. A little magnetic cone. Okay, I've used my lipstick to trace a line on the map following the arrow's direction. I've used my lipstick to draw a line that shows the direction of the arrow on the magic door. But there are too many monuments along this line. I have to find some other clue. In the sentence, the most important remembrances of ancient Rome, the eye of man to the sky. The eye of man to the sky. It's so easy. There is a hole in the roof of the Pantheon. Besides, it was built by the ancient Romans. And only lately, in around the year 600 AD, it was consecrated as a Christian church. Pantheon, the ancient Greek word means temple of all gods. Sorry, miss, but the Pantheon is closed to the public. Closed? What for? Restoration, maybe? I honestly don't know. Now please, let me continue my work. You know, I've always been very attracted to men wearing uniforms. Well, what? Do you think policemen here in Italy are fools? That a couple of sweet eyes can control us? You better go now, or I'll call some of my colleagues. I'm one of the historians sent to check and study the interior of the Pantheon. Sorry, but that trick is as old as the Pantheon itself. Damn. 
I have to find a way to get inside. I have to find a way to distract that policeman while I sneak in. Traditional Roman bar 